I know, I'm sick again, and I just got out of surgery, so bear with me. I wanted to talk about Jazza, his new video. He made a video a few days ago about his stance on AI. You know that I have respect for Jazza and have followed him for many years as a lot of the big artists on YouTube. You guys can frequently find me in the comments of a lot of your favorite artists. Personally, I think his opinion is a little, you know, on brand for him. And it's kind of like a half truth because it's safe but that safe being half-truth doesn't mean that he's lying. I'm an artist who's always been in the habit of using technology to empower my art. And with AI, I've used it as part of a, like my early processes, my brainstorming and conceptualization, and as a means to expand the scope of the work that I create with artists I employ. For example, I've been developing a roleplay system called Gateway Roleplay, very much a, a personal project at the start. I plan to turn it into a product, but in the early conceptualization phases, I've been using AI to create card art. There's more been a proof of concept and a way for me to get inspired by the ideas, not a product in and of itself. In fact, we recently released the alpha to the patrons over on Tabletop Time Roleplay and replaced all of the art with our art produced by Alicia. There's nothing new or fancy with all the different cards. They're basically just put into a category that they share the art for. You can sort of see how AI was a part of that initial process of getting the ball rolling and making something feel real. Speaking of Alicia, those of you who follow this channel know that she's an artist who's worked with us for over three years, well before this AI stuff kicked up. And Alicia works more for us now than she did even when she started. So AI hasn't done anything to reduce her workload. If anything, we've found it's given her more opportunities. He was forthcoming about how he does his work, how AI is involved, and how he was paying an artist, but also that we all know that he pays for midgery. He says that it's he has issues, but not with the users, with the companies. Agree with and disagree with. So allow me a couple of minutes to share with you the grey of where I'm at with AI and AI art. First and foremost, I believe AI art is not a craft, no matter how anyone might attempt to think about it or justify it. You can no more call yourself an artist if the work you're producing is built on the foundation of artificial intelligence than you could call yourself an artist of the skill level of someone whose work you are tracing. It is simply not your work or skill being used. However, I also think AI and AI art is really interesting and exciting and I feel like I'm not allowed to think that. I believe the villains are not people who use AI art, but the companies and capitalist system that seeks to benefit off of the work of others without consent or transparency. And I believe there is something deeply dystopian about AI imagery and videos, and that we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg yet as to the destructive possibilities of these technologies. But the companies are fueling these users, and these users are so dystopian that they believe AI is where everyone is going to put everyone out of a job, for the better in quotations and re replace entitled artists. So it is the people partially too. And when he says that he's firmly on the fence, I can say that too, while being anti AI, because he has so many points. Now, I also came from a science background. I see both the outside application of AI being used in spaces like medical and climate. Like everything climate change related, it's very doom repelled stuff and you can't escape the significant footprint that training AI has on the planet. But because it's kind of like a gambit, you have to see if you can prove that it's a need in taking all of those resources, but that hasn't really been found out yet. There are many, many plans on how it could be used for the environment, from monitoring peatlands, managing forests, to carbon dioxide removal and prediction of climate data for forecasting extreme events. I've mentioned before that there is a generative AI that was used to fix Australian wetlands in its national park because it's so big that there's not enough people that can, you know, check it over for invasive species. And that invasive species kept encroaching on the specific bird's territory. There's also climate GPT being trained right now. It's being worked out to make sure that it doesn't give out any bad information before it's given to the public. And if you didn't know, AI can propel the world towards the achievement of climate solutions. That's what they say because the issues with the climate is more important than the issues with AI. Because I don't know how many of you know, but we have to have like a solution and adaptation action by 2030 which is so important for us not to raise the world temperature by 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius. I'll link the IPCC below and some articles for you to look over if you're interested. Now, when it comes to medical, it's been known to hallucinate. And for now, we cannot count 
on it for diagnosing anything, but that's medical. I will say this, that if we can reach our 2030 climate goals, AI will, I feel in my opinion, carry the weight that is necessary to find it useful. And on top of that, artists getting their rights to their works, these companies cannot continue to use slave labor forever. It's wrong and it must be righted. And as I said before, it is not a replacement and AI users are not artists. That is where me and Jazza do agree. They'll never be that, which they covet. But there's also another problem with AI, good for humans, bad for AI users. Eventually, AI will start having diminishing returns without fresh new data. Those who are at like the profit level will keep telling people that it's moving leaps and bounds every day, but that is not 100% true now, is it? ChatGPT1 to ChatGPT4 is a jump, but is 3.5 compared to 4 all that different? I don't really think so. Now, we are seeing less and less leaps and bounds. We would need vast amounts of data, and even then, that's why we can't get things like specific trees or specific types of dogs or cats, but just things that are common in the data set. And I want you guys to listen to a clip from this guy. He's so smart. And this is the performance on the actual task of, let's say, recommend a system or recall of an object or the ability to actually classify it as a cat. Right? Remember we talked about how you could use this the zero shot classification by just seeing if it embeds to the same place in the picture of a cat, the text a picture of a cat, that kind of process. So this is performance. Right? The best case scenario if you want to have an all-powerful AI that can solve all the world's problems is that this line goes very steeply up. Right? This is the exciting case. It goes like, like this. Right? That's the exciting case. This is the kind of AI explosion argument that basically says we're on the cusp of something that's about to happen, whatever that may be where the scale is going to be such that this can just do anything, right? okay? Then there's a perhaps slightly more reasonable, should we say, pragmatic interpretation, which is like, just call it balanced, right? Which is, but it's a sort of linear movement, right? So the idea is that we have to add a lot of examples, but we are going to get a decent performance boost from it, right? So we just keep adding examples, we'll keep getting better, and that's going to be great. And remember that if we ended up up here, we have something that could take any image and tell you exactly what's in it under any circumstance, right? That's, that's kind of what we're aiming for. And similarly, for large language models, this would be something that could write with incredible accuracy on lots of different topics or for image generation it would be something that could take your prompt and generate a photorealistic image of that with almost no coercion at all and that's kind of the goal this paper has done a lot of experiments on a lot of these concepts across a lot of models across a lot of downstream tasks and let's call this the evidence so you're going to call it pessimistic now but... it is pessimistic also right it's logarithmic so it basically goes like this right it flattens out it flattens out now this is just one paper right it doesn't necessarily mean that it will always flatten out but the argument is i think that, and it, it's not an argument they necessarily make in, in the paper, but you know, the paper's very reasonable. I'm being a bit more cavalier with my wording. The suggestion is that you can keep adding more examples, you can keep making your models bigger, but we are soon about to hit a plateau where we don't get any better. And it's costing you millions and millions of dollars to train this. At what point do you go, well, probably about as good as we're gonna get? This is furthered by the news today that was paywalled, but I got around it, that AI improvement is slowing down. The video I just showed came out in May where this guy is talking about diminishing returns and that it's going to plateau. Now, this new model that OpenAI is working on called Orion isn't making the advancement necessary, which is opting in for diminishing returns already. Now, I know Jazza and other people are so focused, like AI bros and how it's the future and AGI is coming in quotations, but it's just not showing to be that way. I think that at least for now, it's going to go plateauing and it'll be like, do you guys remember what printers even had browsers on them? Like, why would you need to go to the internet on your printer, but it was just there? It's gonna be like that, where they're gonna put AI in freaking everything, and then it's gonna disappear. Sure, there's gonna be people that are gonna be using it, but for the most part, it's gonna be so insignificant, in my opinion. When this AI bubble bursts, I don't think it's gonna be the moneymaker people are hoping that it's gonna be. But you can't do this to me. I started this company. You know how much I sacrificed? Because they can't seriously expect a breakthrough every year. Isn't that the isn't that really unrealistic? Personally, I think we'll have an answer about the accountability for these companies and the laws that they've broken before they have another model that is significantly better. Normies and regular people are now getting up to date on how this stuff is made and what it could do to the future, and they're worried about their children and worried about their own their own work. Even some of their own are now saying the exact same thing. And this was posted by Reed just a few days ago on Twitter. There is this very interesting asymptotic kind of thing that's happening right now 
um, where, you know, two years ago, there was one, you know, LLM that was like way out ahead of everybody else's, which was opening eyes and sitting here today, there's like six um, that are like on par with that. And interestingly, at least for right now, they're all sort of asympt- asymptoting at this at sort of the same point. They're, they're kind of hitting the same, the same uh, ceiling. Um, on capabilities now they you know well there's lots of smart people in the industry working to break through those ceilings but you know sitting here today if you just looked at the data if you just looked at the charts of performance uh, over time what you would say is there's there's at least a local topping out of capabilities that's happening right yeah if you, and, and if you look at like the improvement from gpt uh, 2.0 to gpt 3 to 3.5 and then compare that from like 3.5 to 4 you know we've really slowed down in terms of the amount of improvement and the thing to note on that is the GPU increase was comparable. So we're increasing GPUs at the same like rate, um, but we're not getting the intelligence improvements at all. And I feel that to have the conversation about AI, it's hard for people who have been taken advantage of by AI. Being pro-human and pro-artist is about holding those people accountable for their actions. Sure, people will use it for their projects, but so many of these people are uncreatives who have never learned how to be creative. They're creating slop. They're creating nothing. They're not creating anything interesting or new or exciting. And to tell us that it's good and they hope that they'll never have to hire people is sick to me. And it tells me that you want humans to support you while you did not support humans. Sure, I understand that some people are going to use it for their special projects, but if you never bring on an artist or you never bring on people to help you with your project, I don't know what to tell you. People have been paying their own way to make their dreams a reality. You can't tell me that people who have never been creative have never searched what to do with their creativity and they just type in a generalized like plot point and then they have chat gpt write a 300 page book and then they upload it to amazon to make money you're telling me that that is like what are you creating for what is the purpose you wanted to be an author you wanted to say you're an author you wanted to say you're an artist what are you making time for like it, it like a lot of these people talk about having time to put towards things they want to focus on what are you wanting to focus on your work because you're not working on your hobbies you're not working on your passions if you give it all to AI. You're working on work? Doesn't it seem a little bit silly to you? It seems silly to me. Now, I think that AI having a plateau is a good thing because that means that it's going to slow down a little bit and the law will catch up with these assholes. Now, if you stay to the end, I wanted to thank you for that and please subscribe. I do a lot of research for these videos, a lot of research, because I want to help you guys get up to date and put it in plain speak so that you guys can kind of understand without having to do all the research or having to test these things out yourself or having to go interact on AI wars or interact in AI reddits where people are going to be rude to you because I care about you guys. I care about artists and I care about people who feel taken advantage of by companies and people who use AI. I think Jazza was being very genuine and I know that he he wants to protect his brand, but he also is kind of in the middle ground. I, I, I could tell. You can tell when someone's being genuine. And I feel that he was being very genuine. I, I kind of have used AI in a similar way, not as a core of a production and not even in anything I put out in a monetized way, but as a garnish or a, a momentum builder, a conceptualization process to my work. And honestly, I, I don't believe I or anyone else who uses AI should be berated for doing so. But I feel uncomfortable with seeing AI being used as anything more than a supplement to creativity. And I hate seeing the gross way AI is being monetized, proliferated, trained, and celebrated by some as an outright replacement for developing a craft. And I hate the way that this challenges people's rights to own and control their own creative output. Now, I don't know what that means, but I just think that you guys need to keep drawing and know that there's going to be a lot of ways of feeling and what we do with those feelings is what matters. You know, just be you and have a great week.